I'm Nick. And we are Envy Board Gaming. And today we're looking at Tang Garden. This is a one to four player game. It's designed by Francesco Testini and Pierluca Zizi. And it is published by Lucky Duck Games and Thundergriff Games. Nick is going to give an overview of how you play, and then we're going to give our review. All right, everyone, welcome to the table for a two player game set up here of Tang Garden. I start here with the student here. We, these were dealt out from a starter group and you can see the starter symbol right here. Just let you know that this could be a starter card for you. It also means I get to go, go up a green cube here on my player board. I'm just gonna put my player board over top of the actual board to conserve some space on the film. We're also gonna start with four random small landscapes here. I'm not going to do this one because my player board's there, but there would be one right there. These have symbols on them, um, as well as the large landscapes. Tells you a little bit about what individuals would like to see. Because if you look, take a little closer look at these cards, you're going to see an ongoing ability on top of the card. And you also see a, uh, an ability or a scoring at the bottom of the card. This would do with end game scoring. So in this case, every garden tile so it has a green background here. Every garden tile would give me two coins and coins are essentially victory points in this game. Whoever has the most coins is gonna win. So if the student is facing an area with garden tiles for each one they see, they get two victory points at a max of 10 victory points. And ongoing, as long as I have the students and their abilities, I get Every time I advance on the green track, I get a coin. So to start a game, I advance on the green track by virtue of this symbol at the top right. So I start the game with a coin because I advance on the green track. So I'll go ahead and take a coin for this player. You'll also notice some things on the table here um, on this player board. There are symbols for acquiring other individuals. So we have a couple up here. We have a poet and an officer. So when I acquire one of these, in order to get them, I would have to have all of my cubes reach that section. And you can see there are three of those. Whereas these symbols that show a two and a five coins, as long as I hit a single cube in that, I will get those coins. So for instance, if I reached all three of these cubes to the very end, I will get 15 victory points, AKA 15, cube, or 15 uh, coins. So when I acquire, one of these, I pick which one, I get their mini from the box, and I will have either their abilities if I deploy the one I currently have, or I will deploy one of them to the board in order to get their end game points. That is a choice that I have to make, because I only have one person's ability, the other person I deploy. And there are spots to deploy people. For instance, this starting tile that's always out, they have a spot right here. This symbol is a spot where somebody can stand. These other symbols show other things that you can place decorations on so that you can see there's um, there's some water, there's some mountain terrain right there. And you're gonna see that soon. This game, you are gonna have a choice of actions. You're either gonna take one of these garden tiles, one of these four, they should all be flipped on the side. The top one should be flipped up. You're gonna take one of those and put it adjacent to a currently placed tile or you are going to take decorations, which is going to be these cards right here. You're going to take two decorations plus as many that, uh, tiles that have been taken. So at the moment, it would only be two. If the first player were to go ahead and take decorations, they would only draw two of those. And they would pick which one they would like to keep. So let's, for instance, say how, let's show how these garden tiles work. I'm going to take this one and I'll place it here. And what I'm looking for is what is adjacent to it. Have I, in my, is the edges touching a spot that is currently what I put down? Yes, they're green. So I can go ahead and move up green on my board. Nothing else here is going to give me points. It would if I had some crosswalks. So if you take a closer look at this, there are white borders here. You can probably barely see it, but there are, there are white borders here. If those would those footpaths would extend to a tile I currently placed it adjacent to, I would get a coin for each footpath that continued. But I did not do that, so I am done with my turn. This does not flip up, because now the second player has a choice, the same choice I had. They can either take a, one of these tiles, 
or they can take a decoration, but except that they would get three instead of two because two plus one. So let's say they have a decoration. Let's say the next player decides, all right, we you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at these three cards, see if there's any decorations I want. They have a choice here. Um, let's say they take the Lotus, which is gonna give them a yellow uh, advancement on their track, and they'll have to place it in the water if there were a water spot. Um, hypothetically, there would be, so if I chose that, but if I, if I see there's not, and I wanna say, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna take these flowers right here. What it's gonna do is I'm gonna take the flowers from this bag, you can see they're in here. Um, they're right there. If I were to take those, I would place it on a spot that has the green because that's what it wants. It mean that's what it wants me to place it. And I would just place that token right there and I would keep that card because it's not gonna score me any points right now. But if I were to get this type of flower, which is the Lotus, if I were to get that later in the game, I would get six victory points. Let's see if I can give you that good enough view. So right now it's zero points, but if I, I would be searching for this Lotus later on, which I am now discarding. So I'm going to keep that, place that on one of these um, leaf locations, and that's the end of my turn, except that I flip this back up. Every time I take a, um, a decoration, all these tiles get refreshed from my opponent. And the rest of these cards face up discard. So the game's going to continue like this, and you're going to keep playing until either three or less of these tiles, which you take these when you cover them, three or less of those are chosen, or you run out of one of these stacks. That will trigger endgame. So what do these do? These are the ones that give you the landscapes. So let's take, for instance, let's see another player card. Let's see which one would be good. So you can see the Sword Dancer wants to see a specific type of landscape. So it might incentivize me to go for these and search for that in order to place the Sword Dancer in the vicinity of that landscape. So if I see that symbol on the board, I would hurry up and grab that if I can and place it. They also have other ones that are only one victory point each, but I would also be incentivized to grab those as well. So that kind of shows you, gives you some direction of where to deploy the Sword Dancer if you were to acquire the Sword Dancer. And those would just stick up. So like the, the larger ones, you have a symbol right here. These are for the larger landscapes with the mountain terrain. That's these guys. These guys go in the back. So if I can place them, if I, if I were to get them, I would place them on the back end of any of these spots. And when I play the individuals, it really matters where they are looking. So depending where I want them to look, I can just turn them. And that happens, That you can only do that once. I, I'll tell you how you can break that rule one time, but you can only, once you place them, they are stuck looking in that direction and on that tile. So that all actually matters in this game. Um, now the way, the way to alter that a little bit, we have four of these tokens down here that we can use one time. We can go ahead and do a couple things that break the rules. We can take two tiles from the garden tiles instead of one. And then we, when we do it, we, any of these, we exhaust them. You can take two decorations instead of one. You can relocate a person, like I said, and change their direction and or change their direction. You don't have to. You can just do one or the other or both. Or you can also take your choice. So if I really wanted that sword dancer, I can dig through this deck and take them and go ahead and deploy them or keep them for their special ability. Um, so yeah, you, that, that's gonna give you some direction in that, in that route of taking these. Also, when you have four of them, you can, in a two player game, you can exchange four of these that you collected to refresh one of your tokens to use them again. In a higher player count, you can um, exchange to just three. You can use three to exchange in order to flip one back over. So you're just gonna be, um, Playing out these tiles, and another rule I mentioned is if you if you enclose a terrain where it's just it's done, it's closed off, you will get an extra cube as well. If you do two footpaths in one um, garden tile, you'll have a choice of either moving in a, a, one of these of your one cube of your choice or taking the two coins. That is your prerogative, and yeah, that's that's basically what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna place it on different decorations that give you different valued coins. Um, the pavilion here, really nice. You can actually has a, a spot for deploying people in it as well. And so does the bridge. 
And these are all just things, so you can see that you can place the bridges here because there's that bridge symbol. These are all just things that have to do with the decorations. There's a variety of decorations, birds, fish, willow trees, um, pine trees, peach trees. You can place them, and it says where they can go. So I can play this peach tree if I had a peach card, and it would just go on this leaf symbol. So it's really cool in the way that you're gonna be going ahead and playing out all these decorations. And um, yeah, it's just a just different game, and we'll give you our thoughts. All right, back from the table, and here we go for our review of Tang Garden. Um, right away, the bright the bright spot of this game, and it's so clear to me, is the appearance. The appearance is yeah. um, just gorgeous. The thing, the pavilions. I mean, come on, this pavilion is awesome. The trees, <laughs> the trees, awesome. Um, is that is that your favorite part? Is the look of this game? Yeah, I would say just the table presence of it, the way uh, that it, it really stands out when people see it. They go, "Wow, what's this?" And then having not only the landscapes being placed around the board, but they're two sided, <laughs> so no one has to look at the back. That yeah, doesn't have, spin it around. Yeah, like what is it? You know? Yeah, when that's we played it online, it wasn't like that. Yeah, we're pretty sure it was just one sided when we played it before it came out. So we're happy to see that the production copy has. Both sides, thank goodness. And I also like that there's little spaces to put the stuff like specifically on the board. Like it tells you, oh, the fish go here, yep. or a little lotus or something won't hang out here. I like yeah, that. and I kind of like the fact that it's more restrictive that way. It might you might not be able to play that, yeah. so you got to deal with that and figure out something else. Yeah, I like that about that. I I like that you can't just say willy nilly. I'm going to be able to play whatever I want to play. That's not always the case. Mm -hmm. so that's a that's a good thing. You can't even play the people sometimes. There's no place for them to stand. Yeah. So that's cool too. Um, what action would you say? Like, what thing in this game is your favorite thing? Like, oh, I want to, when you look forward to this action, is there anything that stands out? Like, there's a good action better than others? I like when I get a chance to get a lot of decorations to look at. I like when I can really pick through and then play my lantern at the right time and get more than one, um... Uh, decoration at once. What about you? We agree. Um, the best part of this game are the decorations. So just the the card play here of drawing these cards and looking for that, whatever you're looking for, the birds, the pavilion, whatever you need to finish out your lotus or whatever mm. it might be. And the beautiful artwork. Yeah, it's very I nice. mean, then you, then you know you're going to be able to put these things out. That's really cool and that's unique to you. I think these are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But that means that the best part of the game where it should have been was the tiles is not the tiles. The <laughs> tile placement should have been the best part of this game. Yeah. That is the crux of this game. You're placing out tiles and trying to get victory points and you're trying to get placements. It's not the best part of the game. It's not even, it's not even above average. It's mm -hmm. below average, this part. Um, the weight of this game is, I would put it somewhere around uh, Carpe Diem. Um, it's a lighter weight game. There are some rules, things that are a little finicky to me. Um, no reference sheets. Would have been nice to have a reference sheet. Yeah. Um, especially if you're just learning the game. It would have been so nice to play a four-player game and have a reference sheet for one or two. I mean, it would be nice to have four, but at least we can have two maybe. Two reference sheets might be good. Instead of having to flip through the book all the time and just make sure of all these different little rules, these little nitpicky rules... Um, that would have been nice, and uh, it's very unfortunate that there wasn't any reference sheets in this game. Um, so, my score is... It's going to be more based on the play. I do factor in the art. Um, it's going to give it a boost just for the mm -hmm. art alone, just for the table presence. Fantastic. It is going to get a good score. It's not going to get Carpe Diem score. It's going to get 8-3. Carpe Diem was 8-6, and I put that in a similar range um, as far as weight but yeah. the gameplay carpe diem is superior because the tiles are so much better but if you look at the two games you're gonna want to play tang garden mm -hmm. but i'm telling you carpe diems it's it's a better game and um this one's still very good uh i don't plan on selling it anytime soon but it just missed the mark on the tile placement for me what do you think Vic? yeah the tile placement was sometimes you didn't like any of the options and you'd be like eh. I don't really want to put any of these down or there's no place to put them, you know, because you're not going to complete anything. But one thing I liked that the tile placement had was that it leads to you being able to really put out those characters. The, decor the decorations give you um, some movement on your track, some of them, not all of them, you'll notice that. Um, so it helps you to place a character, which is 
one of the, another part of the game that I like, I don't know, what did you think about having them look at certain things? Like, I just thought that was really a cool idea. It's a cool idea. For a game. It's a cool idea. Um, the variation isn't there. So, like, you'll see the gray border tiles. You'll see the the blue. You'll see the green, uh, the green and whatever, the yellow. But, I mean, that's not the kind of variation I want, just to know that you're just picking the same thing of all four variations, you know? Just, mm -hmm. it... It, something was missing there too. I felt like there could have been more characters, but that would have all spun off the tiles because the tiles need to do more. There need to be special because the special tiles here. There are three special tiles, mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, they're not exciting. They just give you coins. Um, yeah, I thought they would do more. I was like, Ooh, "What does this one do?" And he goes, "It gives you coins." Huh? <gasps> I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Feld again. When you think of a Feld game like Castles of Burgundy, I play out a building, and that building has a different ability. That, mm -hmm. That's exciting. Now I get to get all yeah. these different things. There's some variety. This one, I either get coin or I move on the track. And that is it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I hate to sound like I'm ragging on this game. I gave it an 8.3. That's, that's a recommendation. I like the game. I do, I do, I do. But it's because <laughs> of these cards. It's because of the landscapes. It's because of the beauty. It's not because of the tiles. And the tiles just missed the mark. And that's so unfortunate because this could have been a high eight. Yeah, I agree. I also do like uh, the characters having different uh, abilities that not all of them do, but some do. And like, I just thought it was very clever with the sight thing. And I, I like playing the game. I like the feeling of the quality of the components to me. Feels pretty good. Like the tiles are not flimsy. They're pretty solid. I mean, uh, the cards are, are decent. The card stock, it's not amazing, but they're good. And, uh, and the little miniatures of the, of the people, I mean, they've got some nice artwork on the cards and yes. the miniatures are done well. Oh, so that's good. The beauty, the beauty is there. Yeah. I'm scoring this game close to Nick. I gave it an 8.4. Nice. <laughs> so close. I, I was on the same page with Nick on this one. Um, just, just fun game. You know, it plays very quickly. I don't know. What did you think about the length of the game? Yeah, I think it's uh, fairly accurate. I don't know. It says 45 minutes on the box. I feel like 45 to 60. We liked it best at two players. I don't actually. I can't speak for him. I like it best at two players. I don't know. We played. I have to play it against. Four. I guess I have to play it again. I think it, the sweet spot's probably two or three. Yeah, I, I just had fun because it was so back and forth with Nick when we were playing, um, and and you know maybe we would try again uh, with four again just to see. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, just good two player game. It scales well too with four people. It's not that bad. It's not like turns take forever. Before you know it, you're back to you. It's it's not that crazy. Um, and, and, you know, there's not a lot of analysis paralysis. I didn't think you really had to think it through that much. Like, pick a tile or take a decoration. And you kind of sometimes just know you're going to take a decoration. Because all the tiles are going to be not flipped up. And it's like, oh, well, that's obvious. You're taking that. And then you, by doing so, though, you give the other players the chance to have new tiles to pick from. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over really quickly what I mean by the variation. So, the poet, the hermit, and the student are all the same. If you look at them, it's just a color difference as far as their abilities down here. You know what you're doing. You're getting one, you're moving one block every time. And when you move that block, you're going to get a coin. That's their ongoing ability. And it's just, it's just a color difference. And the same thing with the, with the end games. It's just the color difference. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. But check out, check out the Empress. That is, that is really cool. That is something different. That is saying if they see the lady or the emperor in their line of sight, that's not a good thing. You lose victory points. Yeah. However, you get victory points if they don't. You get those nine victory points. That's something different. That's clever. I like that. And there's a story to that. They don't, there's some some affair going on. They don't care. That's very cool. That's a very cool idea. There could have been more thought like, thought that, like that, more conditions, more nothing, more to think about. And not just tacking yeah, on Yeah, like the, if the the child sees the, you know, the sword dancer, I don't know. Yeah, or some predator. Like, they like <laughs> to see animals, but what if it's a, a bear? Yeah, 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 that would have been clever. And th there was a lot of opportunity there. And also, because you have these lanterns, you can move your players, so you can really get somebody. Because if you get the emperor, and then you decide, ah, the empress is out, I'll just put that emperor right there. And there would be more player interaction that way. I feel like the only real interaction in this game is, one, if you take a decoration and you choose to draw that, and then people go, oh, I was going to do that. Or you take the tile somebody wanted. Mm -hmm. That's really it. 
Um, I guess, too, you're competing with the decorations. It's interesting. Like, whoever has the most pavilions is going to get the most points. So I'll be, like, looking over, how many pavilions you got? Yeah. <laughs> and then seeing. So I actually thought about that. thought it occurred to me of having just a little, take that, maybe one of the buildings or something. Just have different type of buildings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, what, what can the buildings do? Well, maybe they can adjust the way somebody's looking or, yeah. or your opponent's looking. Mm -hmm. They make them use their lantern to fix that. Or the bridge could cover up someone's decoration or do yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah, a little take that. Just but you can you can fix it. There should be ways to fix that too. Mm -hmm. But you have to burn through your lantern or something. Yeah. Anyway, we're we're talking some negatives here, but overall we both gave it eights. Yeah, and we you, liked it. And if you haven't been to our channel before, we don't give every game eights. So this is a recommendation from both of us, actually. We're just nitpicky, I guess, because I feel like the game could have been so much better, but it, it was still very good. We haven't played any of the expansions either. There are expansions for this game. Um, so maybe that ha leads... We don't even know. I don't even know yeah. what it adds. I didn't even know it had an expansion until I saw some fella doing a review. I'm like, I think those yeah. were expansions. It kind of looked like the expansions were the same size as the regular box. <laughs> yeah, so I imagine that's a good price tag on those. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments below if you've played this game and if you have tried any of the expansions. We are interested to hear what your thoughts about this and the expansions for the game. And like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.